So good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming to our session. And uh, today we will be discussing about uh, develop, test, and deploy at scale. And the purpose of the session is to share uh, feedbacks, tools, and processes with you uh, that are part of our daily use of uh, Drupal and all the CI and CD stuff, uh, and only especially for quality process. Uh, so first of all, let's introduce ourselves. Uh, I'm Sylvain Moreau. I'm the CSO of Access, I'm AWS. I'm also its founder in 2001. And it's a pleasure to be here because today is my 10th anniversary of being a DrupalCon speaker. And my first time was uh, in Prague in 2013. So it's really an honor to do this again. And uh, thank you. <laughs> And uh, I'm going to hand it back to Anne-Sophie, who is going to introduce herself. Thank you. Hi, I'm Anne-Sophie. I'm a project manager. I'm also an active member of the French Drupal Association, a member of French Translation, and I love to organize Drupal Camps. <laughs> Hi, everybody. My name is uh, Francis Lemaitre. Uh, I'm project uh, manager at uh, FMSH. Uh, FMSH is a public institution uh, which promotes uh, uh, research in social and human uh, sciences. And also, uh, we, uh, um, we are leader of uh, Canal U. So, uh, I, um, I led the redesign of, uh, of Canal U and um, I'm also uh, responsible of the maintenance of uh, the platform. Uh, so what will be covered in this session, um, this is the plan. Uh, so first of all, we will present ourselves, the customer and the agency, so FMSH and uh, Access. Uh, then we'll talk a little bit, so why we made this session and uh, uh, TLDR. Uh, uh, it's because we wanted to share our mistakes and uh, the common tools that we use. Uh, and then we will go through every detail of uh, our, our tools and processes and see some use cases. And uh, we will conclude with uh, the, the detail of uh, not so good or we can say a bad experience. Even we have uh, more processes, uh, sometimes uh, we fail and we like to learn and uh, share why we failed on this one. Uh, so first of all, to start, we, we are Access. Uh, you've seen us, we are a sponsor, a platinum sponsor of this DrupalCon and very proud of it. Uh, we've been doing Drupal since version 4.6. So that means 2006, uh, I founded this company with some people in this room. Uh, we are 42 people, uh, including 26 developers, in-house developers in France. And uh, here at Drupal Conlin, we are 15. Uh, so don't hesitate to talk with us, come say hello. And if you, if you want to chat about projects, uh, we're here. Uh, every, everyone in the team will be there for you. And we take care of our customer from D0. That means we do the strategy, the UX, the UX, UI, uh, the development, Drupal development, but also the hosting. We have a French hosting. Uh, we do the maintenance and also the SEO, SEA analytics part. And our customers are big public and cultural uh, institutions public and cultural, and also NGOs like WWF, UNESCO. We will talk about UNESCO uh, tomorrow at uh, 9.15, and some big private companies uh, in the editing field, for example. Uh, so now I hand it back to Francis to introduce Canal U. Okay. Thank you, Sylvain. Um, so um, Canal U is a public uh, media platform, which is uh, financed by the French uh, government. Um, it is uh, totally free. It's free for use and uh, free uh, for contribute. Um, it was created uh, more than 20 years ago, and uh, now we have uh, more than 25,000 hours of uh, video and podcast uh, archives. Um, we have uh, 300 uh, content uh, providers. Um, actually, I could translate Canal U as a university's channel. So uh, most of content providers are uh, universities, but we also have uh, museums, public institutions, and uh, research labs uh, as well. Um, most of our contents uh, 
uh, recordings of uh, conferences and seminars, but uh, more and more we have an uh, interesting uh, collection of uh, interviews and uh, documentaries. Um, Canal U uh, has its uh, own dedicated uh, infrastructure, which is uh, led by uh, um, a hosting uh, company. And um, one, point, uh, one uh, important point is that we developed our own uh, uh, live uh, streaming and uh, video on demand uh, services with a company spe specialized in uh, audiovisual. Um, and also we have our own uh, encoding service which is uh, interfaced with our Drupal uh, back office. Um, so of course uh, audiovisual aspects are very important in Canal U, but uh, also high level documentation is uh, very important. Um, when uh, publishing the content, uh, contributors can uh, uh, complete a lot of uh, metadata such as authors, scientific fields, uh, chapters, uh, copyrights, uh, educational uh, uses uh, of the content uh, and so on. So uh, for that, we uh, interfaced our taxonomy system with a public entity service called uh, IDRF. And uh, using IDRF, uh, uh, our um, metadata are uh, interfaced with uh, RAMO, which is um, uh, uh, the official taxonomy of the BNF, uh, the French National uh, uh, Library. And uh, also, uh, it uh, enables uh, our authors to be uh, interfaced with uh, different uh, uh, repo uh, authors repositories, uh, such as uh, Archive or Wikidata. So, um, some uh, numbers uh, of Canal U. Uh, so, we have uh, 17,000 Drupal users in the back office. Um, more than uh, 47,000 video pages, more than 22,000 author pages, almost uh, 7,000 uh, taxonomy terms. Uh, we also have 2 million uh, visitors per year, uh, 200 uh, new contributions uh, every month, and uh, at least uh, one major delivery uh, in production uh, every month. So you can see that there are a lot of uh, activity and data uh, dealing uh, with Canal U. Okay, I give the word to Ad So in this use case, we, as a team, we are working with uh, an architect and a main lead developer, uh, one to three or, or more developers back and front, uh, the same project manager me, since the beginning of the project and a lot of issues and tickets. <laughs> And the two sub project on Red Mines, it's a tool we are using for our project management. Uh, on the customer side, we have one project manager, Francis, and uh, other people, uh, and two technical partners for video integration and uh, um, EDRF integration. And in terms of organization, we have four main branches and five instances, and we'll talk about this uh, a little bit later. <coughs> What we wanted to share today was were good practices and good tools, um, and the objective of putting such tools together and such practices together in the quality processes. Uh, first of all, it's to be confident in our practices and our deliveries because when you work on this kind of sites, uh, you want everything to be needed and everything to be perfect because uh, uh, things can go wrong and you want to limit that. And uh, be confident means being confident between the customer and between the agency. Uh, and that helps to keep a good relationship and uh, confidence with our customers. It's the first part, uh, be sure that our deliveries won't fail. And uh, we also want to continue to work on the project uh, from the time we put it online, because uh, if you can imagine, uh, putting a site online is only a birth, uh, and then you have to raise the child to another level. So this is how we see big projects. Uh, and some kind of actions that need to be taken right from the start is a clear communication. Uh, maybe it's, uh, it's an evidence for you, but uh, we do weekly meeting between our project manager and the customer project manager. 
uh, and the dev team. Uh, we, need have, we need to have clear and shared processes. Uh, that means that every responsibility has to be detailed and attributed to someone. Uh, that means you know what a project actor does in the project. And then finally, and that we will detail just right now, it's a bunch of tools and practices uh, to establish a routine of work. The more routine you give to all the whole team, and the more quality you bring, and the more confidence you bring. So now I can uh, let Anne-Sophie present you a collection of tools with Francis. So we start with the very beginning. Of course, we are using Git uh, for code-based storage. And we have, as I said previously, we have four main branches, um, named master, or main, and uh, other branches for evolution, dedicated, and uh, pre-production and production. Production is live sites. Um, we are trying to avoid cherry picking and to follow the full process for deliveries in order to avoid mistakes and to keep something clear and simple to follow. Um, and we also have name our branches with the same name of the environments uh, in order to be out having something really clear for new people on the team. And we have also some protection of the pre prod and prod branches uh, for avoiding uh, mistakes on deliveries. Adding to that, we have also implemented some tools, added some tools on our GitLab CI and pipelines in order to have automatic testing and code checking uh, using standard and open source uh, tools. And so I have also list uh, all the tools we have implemented on a slide in the end of the presentation. So you will have the full list of links. It will be easier for you to, to check if you have the same list of me, with me. And uh, we also are using uh, Mattermost as a chat system. Uh, we have multiple teams on Mattermost. One for us on the team for informal discussion and technical discussion, and another uh, space with the clients for more formal discussion and having a good uh, communication and visualization on what we are doing now and what will, uh, will be done uh, on the after. Uh, we are also trying to make the tools talk together. So uh, GitLab is talking to Mattermost and uh, me as a project manager, I know when a commit is done and what is about. Uh, and it's easier to know if it's go something is going wrong or not. And uh, as well, in this list of tools, tool, um, I have rediscovered preparing this presentation. We have also unit tests. Uh, we made this test for two reasons. The first one is because Canalu is like kind of YouTube and you don't want a contributor can publish a video on another channel contributor. So we have a unit test specifically, specifically made for that, for testing this part. And the other test is for uh, being sure IDRF, the external uh, reference, is still working with our system. For deliveries, we are using also Jenkins and Mattermost. Uh, and these two tools are also talking together. So in Jenkins, we have one job for environments and uh, most of these have uh, automatic um, launch, except one is my privilege as a project manager. I can run a delivery on a staging environment. It helped me to make a full delivery of tests for the client without a site is rerunning and testing by the team. When I have a lot, a bunch of, of tickets to deliver to the client, I make my own delivery based on the main branch. And then after we'll start to launch a full delivery uh, to production. Um, and for that, uh, we are using a no made uh, shell script, really simple. It makes a git pool, sys compilation, synchronization of your configuration, and um, Drupal updates, clear cache, and that's it. <laughs> We are also working with Redmine as a project management tool. And we have also created a custom field uh, in order to have the same list of environments and to uh, be able to create specific list of issues, uh, which features is available on which environments uh, and, to, and to make also specific tickets for deliveries. Um, and, uh, and I will 
just explain right after. Uh, this is an example of a, of a ticket for deliveries. So if we are ready and we have a lot of things to deploy and we want to share a bunch of features, we are creating me as a project manager, I'm creating a ticket and I ask to developer to make uh, a diff between two branches, so master and pre-prod. And, um, and this makes something like this. Uh, we have a specific uh, commit message with a pattern with the ID of the ticket and it helps us to create this list and to make automatic link to the tickets. So for me, I can, once the diff is made, I can check each ticket, I know the different status, and only, only if all the tickets are validated, I can deploy. <laughs> Easily the developer. Um, and sometimes we need specific process because uh, not all delivery are automatic and you can need to run a specific command or to add an item uh, for a menu or do something manual, it could happen. So we have another uh, custom field for read these notes. Uh, each developer is working on his ticket and explain what action has to be done manually for delivery on his ticket. And we are, when we are creating the, the full ticket for delivery, each release note is regrouped on the, on the diff merge um, uh, message. And it's easy uh, on, your, on your delivery on each environment to follow all these steps to be sure everything is available on each environment. Okay, so um, uh, first I would say that um, at CanalU, uh, as a customer, we believe that uh, uh, we have to take a very active uh, part of the quality uh, approach. Um, our testing team is composed of uh, three people, uh, one documentalist, one webmaster, well, one webmaster, sorry, and, uh, and me. Um, so first of all, uh, each unit del delivery is uh, uh, tested by, uh, by my, my two colleagues and uh, they work uh, with uh, access uh, until uh, each uh, feature uh, corresponds to uh, the re requirements. Um, after they va validated uh, all uh, the tickets, uh, I check uh, and uh, va validate the, the package of uh, features to be uh, deployed uh, on pre-production. Um, after uh, the pre-production uh, deployment, I first uh, make a technical check. Um, I verify that uh, each uh, service of a canal U is uh, working well. So, uh, for example, I, I check that I can uh, encode uh, a video, uh, launch uh, live streaming, uh, receive an email uh, from Drupal, uh, write uh, something on the da database uh, and so on. So for that, I use uh, specific uh, routines and also uh, a grid, the, the grid that you can see here uh, on the slide. Um, this pro process takes me uh, about uh, 15 minutes. Um, if my technical check is okay, then uh, uh, my colleagues uh, start the operational check so um, for the, the check that uh, each uh, use case of Canal U is uh, working well, uh, both for front and uh, back office. So for example, the documentalist um, verifies the results uh, of the search engine for specific uh, keywords and checks that the results are conformed to, uh, to the data. Uh, also, the webmaster uh, verifies the whole process of creating, modifying, and deleting uh, media content. Uh, for that, they also use their own uh, uh, routines uh, and, and grids, and this process takes about uh, 30 minutes. Um, if uh, everything is uh, validated uh, by me and my colleagues, I can uh, give the go uh, to deploy in uh, production. Um, the deployment and production is not made by access, it's uh, led by our hosting uh, company, most of the time. <laughs> um, 
Uh, it's uh, very quick. It, it takes less than uh, five minutes. And um, uh, since uh, production is a perfect copy of uh, pre-production, we there is no need for operational check again uh, at this stage. Uh, I just make uh, another technical check to make sure that uh, every uh, service uh, is running. Um, and also a, a last word, so it, it, uh, a last word about uh, encoding service because uh, it uh, it adds some complexity to uh, this process. Because, uh, for example, um, b uh, when we want to make a deployment on production, uh, the day before we have uh, to launch a script that uh, we we developed, uh, um, a script that uh, pause the the encoding tasks. Because uh, uh, if uh, if we make a, de a deployment in production when there are encoding tasks uh, running, it could uh, we could have a database uh, conflicts. So uh, we also have to deal with. Uh, um, to deal with this. Um, so, um, all, uh, all these routines and uh, process are uh, well uh, documented. Uh, all the documentation is uh, shared on uh, the wiki page of the RainMind project. Um, and of course, is shared with all actors of uh, the platform. So access, but also the hosting company and the audiovisual uh, company as well. Um, this uh, documentation is quite uh, easy to uh, follow because uh, we described step by step uh, the process. And um, also uh, we describe uh, the, the notification uh, processes and also very important the rollback procedure when uh, facing uh, an incident. Um, so um, we try to, uh, to keep this documentation uh, updated uh, all the time. Uh, the better will be to uh, anticipate uh, uh, the incident, but uh, it's not uh, easy to <laughs> do it uh, every time. But al at least when uh, every time we uh, face uh, an, an incident uh, of deployment, we update the documentation to, to make sure uh, this uh, incident will not uh, happen again uh, in the future. This is not uh, specially for deliveries, but it's another example of tools and uh, quality check we are running um, every day on project. As we are working on many uh, Drupal sites, we have created another Drupal site. It's an internal project with one main content, uh, content type named project. And we have listed all our projects inside. And this tool helps us to, to check um, the, the update we could run uh, on sites for core, for modules, but also for uh, libraries and other stuff like PHP, etc. And uh, this helps us to see what, uh, what we have to do and when, and to uh, have a good visibility on the, on the maintenance of the site and for each site. So it's, it's not exactly the same uh, process for deliveries, but it's also uh, an example of great tools we could uh, implement as well. Um, so e it's a slide with a list of, uh, of tools we are using with the code quality check. Also, it's um, mainly, I think, only open source stuff. Uh, it's common stuff and well known. Uh, it's also stuff we have learned to, to, to use in, uh, in conference and RubelCon as well. Uh, in, uh, and you will find this in the presentation on the site. But one day, um, even with uh, tools and processes and co good communication, sometimes bad story could happen. Uh, we had a bad experience, maybe the only one, uh, in deliveries with this project. Uh, and that's the story. Um, 
We had a lot of bunch of tools to deploy, and after discussion and testing, uh, we decided to deliver on Monday at 2 p.m. Uh, but um, preparing the Docker image, uh, we had an incident with GitLab. Uh, I didn't mention uh, Docker before because I think it's not um, specific tools in the, in the delivery, just a tool we are using in this project, but most of these tools we are using for Canalu with Docker, we are also using with other solutions for deployment. Uh, but in this case, we had an issue with Docker. Uh, so it was impossible to create the image and to prepare the delivery. And for this time, it was us as a technical team to, to launch the deployment because we had some specific command to, to run after the deployment. Uh, finally, after discussion, we were ready the day after on Tuesday and we finally launched the deployment at 4 p.m. And then it was a specific day, I was in a train um, the lead developer uh, had to leave early uh, on this day and uh, we, we had a missing communication between uh, us and uh, a customer and uh, finally Francis has made his uh, technical reset uh, on, at uh, 7 p.m. and of course not everything was working fine and uh, we didn't have any uh, video encodage uh, and uh, streaming and uh, it was not working at all. So we had to do something and uh, he had the, the good contact with uh, the hosting company. They were able to, uh, to launch a rollback and to, and to take time to relaunch the delivery after. Okay, so um, I would say that wh what we learned from uh, this uh, experience is that uh, everything, can, uh, everything bad can happen. And so it's not a waste of time to uh, imagine what uh, you will do if you face uh, an incident and uh, uh, it's better to, uh, to write a routine for every kind of uh, scenario you can uh, imagine, it's better to anticipate. So um, for, for me, the, ma the main uh, failure in this, uh, of this day is that, uh, and it was also my, my fault, that to, to allow to start uh, deployment uh, using a process we never made and uh, for which we uh, didn't uh, write any uh, routine, any rollback uh, uh, procedure uh, and so on. So uh, for sure it's something we'll never do uh, again if uh, I don't have a routine, a, a process for deployment, I just, we just uh, don't uh, do it and first uh, um, think about how we will uh, do and what uh, we will do if we face any uh, incident. Um, so, and also to, to conclude uh, about that, uh, what is very important uh, when uh, uh, of the documentation of uh, deployment process, uh, okay, is the steps, but uh, is to think ab about uh, checking uh, availability of uh, every care uh, people concerned by uh, the deployment. Uh, having your rollback uh, routines uh, uh, written um, and also very important to have a clear and quick uh, communication uh, uh, process and uh, quick notifications. For, for example, here I did not, uh, I was not uh, notified at, at 4 p.m. that uh, there was a deployment. If, uh, if um, I would have been notified earlier, maybe the situation would, uh, it, it would have been easier to, um, to, uh, to act uh, for this situation. But hopefully uh, everything, finally, it's, uh, it's a, the story, a story that uh, Fini, uh, ha, had uh, a, good, uh, a good end because uh, we could uh, recover the seat uh, uh, quite uh, quickly. So um, I really hope this uh, lot of tools could help you to improve your deliveries and I'm really sure you have other tools and other experience too. It's just an example of what we are doing in our team but there is a lot of solution of course. Um, and maybe the best quality tools are start, start always at the beginning of the project when you start working with the clients and you keep to maintain a good uh, communication and confidence 
and after be able to to speak uh, to have a session in uh, Drupalcon with your clients, it's always good. And, uh, and uh, always trying to explain and to share what you are doing and when, and maybe uh, a repeat, uh, say the same thing on a different uh, uh, system, uh, on a ticket, on Mattermost, on, uh, on most uh, platform. And uh, it's also a big thank you to the community because all these tools we are using, we are using now because we, we, are, uh, we have uh, attended many camps and conferences and we have experimented tools. It's all open source tools and so thank you to all of you. That's it. If you have any questions, there is a mic and um, no question in the application. Hello, uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, so I have so many questions, but I will try to. <laughs> um, the first one would be, uh, do you adapt your process to the client or has your client something to say about the tools to use or is it something you impose at the start of the project or something like that? Most of the tools are the same. Uh, sometimes we need to adjust. Uh, sometimes there is specific uh, uh, ask or needs for specific clients. But most of this, we are trying to use it because we know the, the tools and the process. And it's really easier to have the same things to do on all projects. And the best example is when you, the customer wants to work on Jira. And this is really a pain. Yeah. And <laughs> We, tr we try to fight about that. Not about every tool, but Jira it, against Redmine, it's really a pain. Okay, so uh, um, another one. I don't remember what it... Oh, yeah. Um, you have a lot of tools um, regarding your process or your deployment. Do you have um, some quality tools for the front end, like accessibility or performance or things like that? Or is it a secret? Or? It's, it's not a secret but uh, maybe we don't have this for the moment and uh, we have to work on this, yes. Thank you for the presentation. I have a question uh, for the client, if I may. Um, so how, uh, as a client, did you come to integrate and take time to um, the um, uh, test routine? Uh, indeed, we yeah we uh, talked about it uh, a few days ago in internally, and um, in yeah uh, in some ways uh, the clients should yeah uh, 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 yeah uh, suppose that as the uh, aid provider the the thing everything has to be tested before delivery and. and it's not uh, obviously the, the 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 client's job, if you if, I, if you understand. Um, so Thank you. <laughs> I, I hope I understood uh, well your, your your question. I suppose it depends on the clients and on the business you have. Uh, for Canal U, you, uh, Canal U, we don't have. Uh, we don't make money uh, uh, for it, uh, and so uh, uh, we can support uh, long uh, de delays, and we don't need to make deployments every day, and uh, deployments don't need to be very quick, uh, and so on. Uh, what we focus on is quality. So, uh, and it was my, my approach. I, uh, my approach is if we uh, if we are not sure. We can wait. It's not. Uh, it's not a, a big deal. Uh, so um, uh, for sure, it was not easy internally to convince uh, my colleagues to take the time to uh, uh, the, to do these routines and to take uh, the time for uh, those tests. But I think it's also the role of a project manager to uh, to. Uh, the, to, um, to, uh, to teach uh, them and uh, I, I would say that at the start of uh, when we started uh, the, the first tests, tests of uh, deployments, 
uh, actually I personally made uh, most of the tests and time after time uh, I show them how to do it and uh, then uh, finally I just had to make the technical test. Uh, so this is our internal part and also for the I would say the deployment routines, it's a, a work that we did with Anne Sophie. We talked together and uh, we uh, imagined uh, uh, how the best uh, process uh, could be. Yes. Hi, I just had a question around. Um, I think, I think it was implied that you're sharing uh, your Redmine access between perhaps all, all the parties. And um, is there a, like a line where you might stop uh, sharing certain amounts or how transparent are you with what's in Redmine and what's shared between each party? And does everybody see everything or is there like a, a, any um, conflicts there? We, we had an initial Rainmine project for, um, for creating the project and after we have created another one for all the tests made before the first deliveries. So uh, it was in the initial project, the whole development team, me and the client um, was, but uh, there was no ticket uh, assigned to you, I think in the first initial project and after we have created a specific project for testing and it was just a discussion between uh, Francis and you, the, other, the team and me for testing. Um, and no, after there was no, no specific project, we, we, could, um, we could have we have specific uh, role on Redmine and uh, not everyone is able to, to do everything, but uh, that's it. Uh, one way to keep things closed between the customer and the uh, and the agency is the only place where we do this is on Mattermost. On Mattermost, uh, you have a, a channel dedicated to the developers. So uh, all the commit messages and they come to this channel, but the customer doesn't have access unless he requires it. But otherwise, that's we, we, we create a specific workplace in, in Mattermost for every customer. So we can also communicate, but uh, on a different channel. No more questions? Uh, yes, of course. I think uh, the video will be available on the, the, the com site. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I think in the next few days, every session will be with the video and the slides uh, shared. And, and maybe from our, our agency point of view, the great thing having customers uh, who understands the quality process and the importance of tests is that you always learn from them and some of, uh, as you asked before, uh, some other uh, clients we are working right now with, they are starting to challenge us with accessibility testing, including in our pipeline. So every new project is a way to add uh, to our pipeline a new, a new tools. And that can be also uh, like ghost inspector for uh, everything automated. Uh, So thank you very much for coming.